Hello, residents of the universe. Welcome to Ways to Human. My name is AJ. This video is about neurotheology, a field of study that focuses on how religious experiences happen, the science behind religion. Neil deGrasse Tyson describes three kinds of truths, personal truth, political truth, and objective truth. Personal truths are things you believe based on your own experiences. The second is a political truth. It's something that people believe because of tradition, culture, or through sheer repetition. The brain rewires itself to say that something is true because it has heard it so often. The last one is objective truth. This one is grounded in science and weighed by evidence. For example, 1 plus 1 equals 2. The scientific evidence lines up with reality, and that's as close to the truth as you're going to get. As usual, I would like to use science to show that religion is the perfect example of a personal truth. Let's science. I would like to demonstrate that supernatural experiences or in fact natural experiences that are happening within the realm of reality. Psychologists have been studying religious experiences for over a century. Thanks to these discoveries, they were able to recreate these feelings and experiences with electrical and chemical stimulation of the brain in study participants, indicating that these claims often have a trigger, such as anxiety, drugs, stress, depression, music, meditation, prayer states, or even food or water deprivation. There is a scientific field that focuses on studying the relationship between the brain and religious experiences, neurotheology. However, this field is not a single field. It includes several fields of science, like theology, philosophy, cognitive science, neuroscience, psychology, and anthropology. Dr. Andrew Newberg is a neurotheologian that has studied the brain of people praying, chanting, and meditating. He used a functional MRI scan to scan his participants. The results show that when very religious people were having spiritual experiences, a specific region of the brain became particularly active. This part of the brain is a structure that plays a key role in reward, pleasure, and addiction. He has found that prayer and meditation increase activity in the frontal lobe, which is responsible for concentration and focus. The study is aimed at understanding how the brain operates in people with deep spiritual and religious beliefs. Dr. Andrew pointed out that religious experiences are perhaps one of the most influential parts of how people make decisions that affect all of us. So understanding what happens in the brain to contribute to those decisions is really important. The main point here is that when someone undergoes what they perceive as a spiritual experience, before attributing it to a supernatural or divine experience, it's essential to pause and consider other possible aspects that align with everyday reality. What external circumstances might be influencing their perception? Are they under stress? Exhausted? mourning in a meditative state, or are there any other conditions that could impact their brain function or body chemistry? This does not mean that every single spiritual experience happens this way, but it indicates there can often be a natural explanation. This is not about dismissing spiritual experiences, rather encouraging individuals to consider a broader perspective on their experience. While personal spiritual experiences may strengthen faith, it's important to question their reliability. Consider religious affiliation. What specific religion do you follow? Why do people only see or experience their God? 
if there is only one God, why are other people having experiences with other gods? But are all of these gods true and real? All these gods can simultaneously be false and temporarily exist in different minds. Let's go back a thousand years to ancient Norse mythology. The Vikings believed that death in battles would bring them to Valhalla, a version of heaven for warriors only. Each religion today has their own idea of the afterlife. Muslims have Jannah, the Jewish have seven different levels of heaven, and Christians and Catholics have heaven. Can they all simultaneously be true? While spiritual experiences can bring a sense of peace, reassurance, hope, the reality is personal truths aren't always harmless. They aren't always personal. Personal truths can be both comforting and deadly. They are subject to individual differences, worldviews, culture, and cognitive biases. There is a famous quote by David Stevens that says, a lie is a lie, even if everyone believes it. And the truth is the truth, even if no one believes it. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to like and subscribe.